What up, crew? Today I'm going to read you a story by the famous Dr. Seuss, and it's called If I Ran the Zoo. So if you were in charge of a zoo, what animals would you have? What would you do? Let's find out. It's a pretty good zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, and the fellow who runs it seems proud of it, too. And there's a sleepy lion. But if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, I'd make a few changes, that's just what I'd do. The lions and tigers and that kind of stuff they have up here now are not quite good enough. You see things like these in just any old zoo. They're awfully old-fashioned. I want something new. Hmm. So I'd open each cage, I'd unlock every pen, let the animals go and start over again, and somehow or other I think I could find some beasts of a much more unusual kind. He wants to be a little different. A four-footed lion's not much of a beast. The one in my zoo will have ten feet at least. Five legs on the left and five more on the right. Then people will stare and they'll say, what a sight. The zookeeper, new keeper Gerald's quite keen. That's the gall darndest lion I've ever seen. Can you imagine a lion with ten feet? My new zoo, McGruzu, will make people talk. My new zoo, McGruzu, will make people gawk at the strangest odd creatures that ever did walk. I'll get for my zoo a new sort of a hen who roosts in another's hen's top knot and then another one roosts in the top knot of his and another in his and another in his and so forth and upward and onward. Gee whiz. One on top of another. But that's just a start. I'll do better than that. They'll see me next day in my zookeeper's hat coming into my zoo with an elephant cat. They'll be so surprised, they'll swallow their gum. They'll ask when they see my strange animals come, where do you suppose he gets things like that from? His animals all have very odd faces. I'll bet he must hunt them in rather odd places. Where would you find an elephant cat? And that's what I'll do, said young Gerald McGrew. If you want to catch beasts you don't see every day, you have to go places quite out of the way. You have to go to places no others can get to. You have to get cold. You have to get wet, too. Up past the North Pole where the frozen winds squeal, I'll go and I'll hunt in my squeagle-mobile and bring back a family of what do you know. And that's how my new zoo McGrew Zoo will grow. Very interesting. I'll capture a fine fluffy bird called a bustard who only eats custard with sauce made of mustard and also a very fine beast called the flustered who only eats mustard with a sauce made of custard. Yikes. I'll catch them in caves and I'll catch them in brooks. I'll catch them in crannies. I'll catch them in nooks that you don't read about in geography books. I'll catch them in the countries that no one can spell like the country of Mata Fapada Papel. In a country like that, if a hunter is clever, he'll hunt up some beasts that you never saw ever. Hmm. I'll load up five boats with a family of jotes whose feet are like cows but wear squirrel skin coats and sit down like dogs but have voices like goats except they can't sing the very high notes. So he's finding all these new species. And then I'll go down to the wilds of Nantucket and capture a family of lunks in a bucket. Then people will say, now I like that boy heaps. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, is growing by leaps. He captures them wild and he captures them meek. He captures them slim and he captures them sleek. What do you suppose he will capture next week? I'll capture one tiny, I'll capture one cute. I'll capture a deer that no hunter would shoot. A deer that's so nice he could sleep in your bed if it weren't for those horns that he has on his head. Look at those crazy ones. And speaking of horns that are just a bit weird, I'll bring back a very odd family of deer. A father, a mother, two sisters, a brother whose horns are connected from one to the other, whose horns are so mixed they can can't tell them apart, can't tell where they end, and can't tell where they start. Each deer's mighty puzzle he's never yet found, if his horns are hers or the other way round. I'll capture them fat and I'll capture them scrawny, I'll capture a scragglefoot mulligatawny, a high-stepping animal fast as the wind from the blistering sands of the desert of Zind. This beast is the beast that the brave chieftains ride when they want to go fast to find some place to hide. A mulligatawny is fine for my zoo, and so is a chieftain I'll bring one back too.
In the far western part of southeast North Dakota lives a very fine animal called the iota, but I'll capture one who is even much finer in the northeastern west part of South Carolina. When people see him, they will say, now by thunder, this new zoo McGrew Zoo is really a wonder. Most beasts are quite friendly, but still in some lands, some beasts are too dangerous to catch with bare hands. For those that are ugly and vicious and mean, I'll build a bad animal catching machine. It's rather expensive to build such a kit, but with it a hunter can never get bit. A zoo should have bugs, so I'll capture a thorough, whose legs are snarled up in a terrible snarl. And then I'll go out and I'll capture some chugs, some keen shooter, mean shooter, bean shooter bugs. <laughs> Those are some wobbly legs, and there's the bean shooters. I'll go to the African island of Yurka and bring back a tizzletop tufted mazurka, a kind of canary with quite a tall throat. His neck is so long if he swallows an oat for breakfast the first day of April, they say. It has to go down such a very long way that it gets to his stomach the 15th of May. Oh my. I'll bag a big bug who's very surprising, a feller who has a propeller for rising and zooming around making cross-country hops from Texas to Boston with only two stops. Now that sort of thing for a bug is just tops. And when I've caught him, then the next thing you know, I'll go and I'll capture a wild tic-tac-toe with X's that win and with zeros that lose. He'll look mighty good in the zoo of Mick Grews. So there's the three in a row X's. I'll bring back a gusset, a gherkin, a gasket, and also a gooch from the wilds of Nantasket. And eight Persian princes will carry the basket, but what their names are I don't know, so don't ask it. In a cave in Khartoum lives a beast called the Natch that no other hunter's been able to catch. He's hidden for years in his cave with a pout, and no one's been able to make him come out. But I'll coax him out with a wonderful meal that's cooked by my cooks in my cooker mobile. They'll fix up a dish that is just to his taste. Three chicken croquettes made of library paste, then sprinkled with peanut shucks, pickled and spiced, then baked at 600 degrees, and then iced. It's a mighty hard cooking to cook up such feasts, but that's how those new zoo McGrew Zoo gets beasts. I'll go to the faraway mountains of Topsk, near the river of Nafsk, and I'll bring back the Opsk, a sort of a kind of a thingamabopsk, who only eats rhubarb and corn on the Kopsk. Then people will flock to my zoo in a mopsk. McGrew, they will say, does a wonderful jobsk. He hunts with such vim and he hunts with such vigor. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets bigger and bigger. And speaking of birds, there's the Russian Paluski, whose head ski is red ski and belly is blue ski. I'll get one of them for my Zuski McGruski. Then the whole town will gasp why this boy never sleeps. No keeper before ever kept what he keeps. There's no telling what that young fellow will do. And then just to show him, I'll sail to Katru and bring back an Itkutch, a prep and a prue, a Nurkle, a nerdy, and a Cirque Sucker too. Oh my. I'll hunt in the jungles of Hipponohungus and bring back a flock of wild Biponobungus. The Biponobungus from Hipponohungus are better than those down in Dipododungus and smarter than those out in Nippononungus, and that's why I'll catch them in Hipponohungus instead of those others in Nungus and Dungus. And people will say when they see these bits bounding, the zookeeper new keeper simply astounding. He travels so far that you'd think he would drop. When do you suppose this young fellow will stop? Stop? Well, I should, but I won't stop until I've captured the Fizzama Wizzama Dill, the world's biggest bird from the island of Guark, who only eats pine trees and spits out the bark. And boy, when I get him back home to my park, the whole world will say young McGrew's made his mark. He's built a zoo better than Noah's whole ark. These wonderful, marvelous beasts that he chooses have made him the greatest of all the McGrewses. Now that is a pretty big bird. Look at the size of the people in relation to the creature. While wow, they'll all cheer what this zoo must be worth, it's the gall darndest zoo on the face of the earth. McGrew Zoo and then all of his creatures. 
Yes, that's what I'd do, said young Gerald McGrew. I'd make a few changes if I ran the zoo. So that was kind of a dream, wasn't it? He kind of did some make-believe there. And I want you to kind of do the same thing. If you uh, were like Mr. Gerald McGrew here, and you ran the zoo, what would you do? What would you put in there? So I want to challenge you to create something wild, something extraordinary, something completely imaginary. So I sort of based mine on a real creature, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, a dinosaur. I would get the Tennisaurus Rex, though. So these dinosaurs play tennis because I'm a tennis coach. So if I ran the zoo, Mr. Gove would get a Tennisaurus Rex. So you can create as many creatures as you want. They can rhyme like Dr. Seuss's uh, kooky creatures, or you could model it after a real animal or your favorite animal, or just do a spin on something that actually existed like I did with the T-Rex, a Tennisaurus Rex. So they come complete with their tennis racket and tennis ball. Um, and then also the book, A Locket in My Pocket, if you've ever read that, those are some interesting creatures too. So I tried to rhyme them. So I have a wiki wacket with my tennis racket, a bambeezel on my artist easel, and a lachu across my shoe. So I just made up some crazy words that rhyme with the thing that they're next to or on or holding. So you can be a rhyming machine you can just be imaginative and come up with a creature uh, for your zoo as well, just like Gerald McGrew. So I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you can use your creative uh, champion artist imagination. And I can't wait to see what you come up with as well. Adios, amigos.